that's what I talk with most of the people that I know because they know I am someone that really cares about my health, etc. And they always ask me because this is something that many people focus about, which is losing weight, being in shape, etc. Because that's a sign of overall health. Obviously, I'm not talking about the extreme, get into very, very low body fat, but actually be healthy in general. And what I talk to them is what um, I've talked about calling uh, called the farmhouse diet, in which the first principle, as you mentioned a lot in your book, actually, is just eating foods that can be processed, collected, and done um, in the farmhouse, in which we've been eating for thousands of years. Grains were present, yes, but at the very end. And also within that eating real food, there are strategies for you. Maybe you should eat less carbo carbohydrates. You should have a low carb diet. Maybe you can eat more because you're more tolerable. You are being, you are someone that's very, very active within the day. You're an athlete, for example, that might help you, even though you've talked about also being keto and also that being um, extremely helpful for athletes too. Um, some people react in different ways, you know, and maybe, maybe eating with carbohydrates, people react better. So just by that, if you eat real food, you're going to exclude, I would say, 90% of your problems. And then you just need to dial in, obviously, on your sleep, on your stress, on your activity, and all of that. But Dr. Ovedia, I would like to mention something else. So at the very start of your book, you mentioned you were 40 years old and you were described yourself, uh, you described yourself as being obese. And you're already a doctor. So what was the turning point from that? Yeah, and I wasn't just obese. I was what we call morbidly obese, um, you know, and um, I was pre-diabetic. And I came to this realization that as a heart surgeon, I was headed for my own operating table, so to speak. I was, you know, following that same path that so many of my patients had followed. And I also came to the important realization that I didn't know how to fix it. Right? What I had been taught in school, uh, what we all have learned throughout our lives, eat less, move more, eat a low-fat diet, follow the food pyramid, it wasn't working for me. It wasn't working for my patients. And I just recognized that there needs to be a different way. There must be something out there, right? And I started asking some different questions and maybe, you know, opened myself to some what we would say is alternative information, right, outside mm -hmm. the mainstream of medicine. And thankfully, you know, I came to learn about the harms of sugar and the benefits of low-carbohydrate diets. And I tried it for myself. And I had, you know, great success, lost, you know, 100 pounds, uh, more importantly, was able to maintain it, right? Because in the past, I'd been able to lose some weight, you know, doing this sort of calorie restriction, but mm -hmm. I could never maintain it. Unsustainable. Uh, unsustainable. And that's the truth for almost everyone, mm -hmm. uh, because that, you know, isn't sustainable, ultimately, over the long term. Uh, so... Once I saw the success for myself, and then I started talking to some friends and family about it, and they, you know, had similar results. And then I was able to, you know, find other practitioners uh, who were doing this and talking about it, uh, and, you know, really get into why it works so well, understand the science. And ultimately, you know, and maybe a little bit uh, tangentially, right, mm -hmm. I then came to recognize that this was the root problem of heart disease itself, right? I was focused on obesity at first and, you know, maybe the pre-diabetes that I had. Uh, and I didn't immediately make that connection to heart disease. But as I learned more and more, I realized that, you know, this is the root cause of heart disease, the metabolic problems that come with obesity and, and you know, are represented by the diabetes and the prediabetes. Uh, that is the real cause of heart disease. And that is what really caused me to refocus my career and, you know, go on this mission to educate people about how we can finally conquer heart disease. Do you think the approach from allopathic medicine made you think that obesity was one thing and heart disease was another? Because that's very, very crucial to understand. Because I think what most doctors are missing, not to criticize all of them, not, be, not to say that they 
are people who do not care about our, about our health. They do really care about our health. I, I don't think they, they go through this path, going th for med school, studying hours and hours in the in in their desk alone by himself with no um, with no motivation besides himself thinking of delayed gratification about practicing and helping other people. But do you think we should shift more about the uh, allopathic medicine to a more holistic approach? And how can we implement that to medical school? Because I think this is really, really important, not just for me, but all future doctors that um, has been given that idea that we should separate things, just the cardiothoracic system, just the respiratory system, just the... Uh, lymphatic system, et cetera. Yeah, you know, there, it, it's certainly a problem, right, that we've become so siloed and so specialized because we do miss those connections, right? The, the heart doctor is only focused on the heart disease and the cancer doctor is focused on the cancer, right? And the neurologist is focused on the Alzheimer's disease. And because they're not looking at that whole picture, right? They miss the connection that all of these things come from the same root cause. And if we address that root cause, that, you know, becomes so much more powerful, right? And, you know, getting back to the cholesterol discussion, right? Even if we accept the cholesterol narrative and heart disease as it is, right? No one claims that you know, managing your cholesterol is going to lower your risk of cancer, for instance, or, um, you know, can lower your risk of Alzheimer's disease or chronic kidney disease. Um, insulin resistance, when we reverse it, it clearly lowers the risk of all of those things and so much more, Yeah. right? So um, I look at that as a physician and I just say, okay, this is a much more powerful tool. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is most physicians don't learn about this, right? As physicians, we are trained to diagnose and treat the end diagnosis, right? The heart disease, the cancer, the you know chronic kidney disease, whatever it might be. Um, we're not trained to think about the root causes uh, and how to manage those. Now, I am optimistic. I do see the conversation shifting. Uh, I do see uh, lots of, you know, medical students and early stage doctors, early career doctors uh, who are thinking about this. And um, at some level, right, doctors are recognizing uh, the futility of what they are doing, right? We talk about um, shortages of doctors. We talk about the burnout that doctors are uh, experiencing. And ultimately, what that comes down to for me, I think, is that doctors, like you said, we are motivated to help people. And we're not seeing the people that we're trying to help actually get better. And that becomes very defeating. Uh, so that is why I am optimistic that this is going to take hold, uh, that this is going to be more emphasized. And then it just becomes a matter of, you know, we have to be realistic and we have to realize that there are uh, very um, uh, entrenched institutions, right, that don't necessarily want doctors in the healthcare system focused on this stuff. They would rather continue with, you know, the pharmaceuticals that they're making plenty of money off of, the surgeries that they're making plenty of money off of. You know, the whole system, right, is geared towards taking care of sick people. It's not geared towards keeping people from getting sick in the first place. 